Hey y'all, Johnny Mullet here with another update on the bus build. We got the old Thunder bus here at the garage. I'm going to do some preventive maintenance because we have a vacation plan in January. So I want to make sure this thing is good to go. Um, one thing you will notice, I did continue the black paint around the back of the bus, around the back windows. You can also see a few spots of uh, Bondo work that I've been working on, but I want to show you something cool. Okay, a lot of people are like, you know, how am I going to lock my bus up? Um, I see people using house locks and pad locks and all kinds of stuff. Well, this particular bus has this handle here that is supposed to lock the door and I'll show you how it works is if you shut the door regularly okay you just give it a, a push the door will open back up just by pushing it right now if I slam the door now it will not open the only way it will open is if I pull this release handle and that allows the door to open so I'm thinking man if I had a key that would fit that lock that would be set well I was roaming around the old shop here and I found this big old key ring of old keys that nobody knows who they belong to they've been here for 20 plus years so I started messing around and Unbelievably, it was like, sorry about the darkness here, I'm inside the bus in the shop, but unbelievably, I just started trying keys, and the first key, you know, I stuck in the thing, and it wouldn't even go in, it wouldn't even go in, and I grabbed another key, and I stuck it in, and wow, it, it actually went in there, but it wouldn't turn, so I grabbed the third key out of that ring, and I stuck it in, and it turns look at that now it's locked so if I slam this door shut right now the bus is locked the only way to get in is to push this lever but if you ain't have you know if you don't have a key you're not gonna be able to get in so it was really freaking awesome but I was able to find a key that fits this lock so I can unlock my door. So now, no need for a padlock or a house lock or some other lock to put on the bus. So that's pretty sweet. The main reason I have the bus in here is I want to do a transmission service and a rear differential service. So this is the automatic transmission dipstick. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that out like that and now we're going to go under the bus and drain out the old transmission fluid. Okay here we are under the bus. This bus is equipped with an Allison AT545 transmission. There is no overdrive on this transmission it's just a standard four speed automatic transmission. Um, a lot of the schooly people don't really care for this transmission they say it's not a good one whatever but these transmissions have been around a long, long time. I haven't had any issues with it. I just want to do some preventive maintenance. So the first thing I want to do is I want to drain out the old oil. So you just got to find the right socket, which, hey, I got lucky there. And there's a drain plug right here. We're just going to drain the old transmission fluid out of the transmission. I'm draining it while it's nice and warm. I just drove this bus in a little bit ago, so the transmission fluid is warm and it should come out easily. Now, as you see, the transmission fluid in this bus is not really dirty, it's pretty clean. Um, it has a a reddish tint to it, a reddish, oops, sorry about that, a reddish color to it, it's transparent, so it's not nasty, it's not dirty, so I'm not, like, worried about the transmission being bad, 
up here there is a filter for the transmission which I am also going to replace I do want to apologize not having any updates lately um, I told you guys in the last video I had my Geo Metro meet and it was really busy and I had no time to work on the bus so I figure I would bring it into the shop and this way I will be uninterrupted and I'll be able to get the stuff done that I wanted to get done so it's nice that this has an external filter I've been doing a lot of research on this transmission and I'm also very familiar with it there is also an internal filter inside the pan Replacing that filter is not necessary unless you're actually opening up the transmission to do repairs. So we will not be dropping the pan to change that filter. The external filter should be good enough. Okay, we will spin on the new transmission filter. Good and tight. And now we will install the transmission plug. There is a little magnet on the end of this plug right here. And any metal, metal particles it'll pick up. As you see, there's just some normal fine particles. No excessive large pieces of metal or anything. So I'm happy with that. And there we go. The drain plug is back in. New filter is installed. Now we get to fill the transmission fluid from the bit via the dipstick. Um, Baldwin filters, by the way, very good stuff. I like Wix. I like Baldwin. They make very good filters. The cases are better. They don't rust out to like a lot of uh, cheap filters. Um, I think there's basically two companies that make the internals for filters. One of them is Honeywell, and Honeywell uses um, Wix, and Baldwin uses Honeywell internals. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I've learned through the years. Um, Baldwin filters have never failed us, and I've worked at many garages, and most of them used Baldwin filters and we've never ever had an issue I worked at a Ford dealership and I've seen Motorcraft oil filters rust out within a year or two you know you live here in the rust belt that's going to happen so anywho the other reason I brought the bus into the shop is because I want to service the differential oil this being a 1996 model, I don't see any tags or anything in particular that says it takes a synthetic or special lubricant. So the first thing you want to do is make sure the fill plug comes out.
Now this is the fill for your differential. The oil level should be right there. Right level with the plug. It smells like regular gear oil to me. ADW90 gear oil. So I think it'll be safe to go ahead and drain it out. So now that the plug is out, set that aside. There seems to be some crud in there. Now I got three pans ready because there's probably at least two or three gallons in here. So I want to make sure I don't overfill a pan. And we are going to go ahead and drain out the differential. And there it goes. It smells good. It looks clean. This bus has been serviced. It's been taken care of its entire life. That's one of the reasons I'm happy with the purchase. This is a good bus. Okay, now this pan is getting pretty full. We're going to swap it over. And there she goes. Now this is the drain plug that also has a, a magnet on it. And as you see, there's no big chunks of metal or anything. It just has, you know, some regular, you know, sludge and dirt. It's doing its job. The rear end lube is doing its job. Now, if this was full of metal particles or big chunks of, you know, scary metal, then I would worry. But I think we're good to go. We're going to go ahead and let that drain out. And now I get to refill the transmission and then come back here and finish the differential service. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and pull the dipstick all the way out. Just uh, set it somewhere where you're not going to lose it. And I have a transmission funnel. You can find these at the dollar store or any parts store. And that's going to fit in just like that. Let's see if I can get you guys set up so you can see what's going on here. Without dropping the damn tablet. Don't want to cooperate today. That's okay. We'll get it figured out. There we go. Now, um, I'm not really big on to oil additives and other kind of additives but there is one product that i've trusted over the years and that's lucas this is a lucas transmission treatment if you notice i had it laying on top of the engine the reason being is because this stuff is really thick so i wanted to warm it up because it's coming out like molasses So we'll start with the Lucas. My funnel don't want to stay where it's going. It's going to want to come down, so I might have to prop it up just a little bit. I could probably prop it up with a quart of transmission fluid. There we go. Now this Lucas is, like I said, if you don't heat it up, it comes out really really thick so this is going to be a slow process of pouring it in I don't want to sit here and bore you watching molasses flow but basically yeah oops 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 good job Johnny making a mess already so this stuff here is like kind of stuck in the funnel. It's slowly going down. It's going to take some time, so I'll get right back with you guys. Okay, the last of the Lucas is now going in. 
like I said this stuff is really 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 thick that was like three and a half minutes of pouring this thick transmission treatment and then what I like to do so I'm not wasting an expensive product is I'll take some regular transmission fluid and pour it in the bottle like so and then go ahead and shake her up and get the last of the Lucas into the transmission Now, this is an AT545 Allison Automatic. Hold on one second. Sorry about that, a customer pulled in and uh, kind of interrupted the video, but any hoot. As I was saying, this is a Allison AT545 Automatic Transmission. The fluid it requires is standard Dextron 3, and that is what I'm putting in it. Um, some people run synthetics, uh, you know, Royal Purple and other expensive transmission fluids, but in my opinion, it's a waste of money. This transmission was designed to run off of this fluid. As long as you change it regular, you should have no issues. It's a lot cheaper. We're talking, you know, $3 a quart instead of $9 a quart. And this baby's probably going to hold at least... 12 quarts. Um, Wolf's Head products, they've been around for a long, long time. Very good products. I don't buy, you know, the cheapest stuff at Walmart. I don't buy, you know, whatever's, you know, at the dollar store. I like to use good brand name fluids. So I'm not going to sit here and bore you while you watch, you know, me pour 12 quarts or more of transmission fluid in the funnel. So I'll be right back. Okay, I figure while we're here, let's uh, take a tour of the shop. How about that? First off, the outside, um, there's a spare truck for one of the local companies. That's our old yard dog, and believe it or not, there is a wrecker, another white, just like the black and white one, underneath all them vines. And some of the trucks that we service and we work on. Uh, we are closed today, so I took the opportunity to come into the shop and get this bus work done. Um, by the way, I did get some Bondo work done there. See that? So anyway, this is our shop. This is the truck side of the shop. So we have this very long drive-through bay. Very easily fit. A tractor and trailer and another truck. And then we also have bays over here sorry for the mess in the shop but uh, the cleanup guy should be here shortly um, here we have a freight liner with a Cummins and we have the exhaust manifold and turbo off because it developed an exhaust manifold gasket leak so you can see right here the black soot where the gasket blew out and was leaking exhaust fumes into the cab so that kind of sucks for a truck that's only two years old, but these modern diesel trucks are not like they used to be. That's why I appreciate my older older bus. Um, there's my toolbox right there. So we have these bays also. Besides the long bay here I showed you, we have a heavy duty lift that we can lift super duty trucks and cars on there. And we have a bay here and a bay there where that uh, truck I showed you with the exhaust manifold problem. It's kind of dark. I don't have all the lights on, but we also have another drive through bay on this side of the shop that runs all the way through to the other side. And if you come on in through the dark tunnel here, 
This is the medium duty side or bay of the garage. And here we have a 29,000 pound drive on lift. So we work on a lot of railroad trucks and heavy duty, medium duty trucks. And we use that lift quite often. And not only do we work on big trucks and medium trucks, but we also have a car bay. So this is the car lift. It's only a 9,000 pound lift. Lots of car work there. And here we have a dead bay for, you know, projects and stuff like that. Like this guy towed in his Volkswagen buggy and he wants us to get it road ready after it's been sitting. Let's see, the inspection sticker says the last time it was on the road was in 2001. So she's been sitting a while. We did get the engine to run, uh, a little bit of carb work, and we're gonna get all the brakes and suspension and everything tuned up for them. Um, here's a Subaru engine that we pulled out of a customer's vehicle. We had to replace the engine because he overheated it, kept on driving, started making some knocking noises. So there's a tour of the shop. Not too bad, huh? I've been here 11 years now. I love what I do. This is a local business that's been here for a long, long time. And we have a, it's like 90% of our customers are local return customers because they love us. So that's pretty sweet. All right, guys. Um, I don't want to drag this out too long because I think we're already in like 20 minutes. So uh, basically with the bus, I'm going to fill up the transmission fluid. I want to run the engine until it's up to operating temperature. Keep checking the fluid. Make sure it's full. And the transmission service is done. And I showed you earlier with the rear differential. Basically I put the drain plug back in. Fill it up with gear oil until... Like I said, the fill plug, the oil level is even with the fill plug, so it's not pouring out. So that's going to complete the service that I'm going to do today on the bus. I do want to do some front brakes. Um, the rotors look good. Um, the pads are old, and they look a little crumbly. You know what I mean? They're kind of aged, and I want to make sure the brakes are good to go, especially if we're going out west and if we encounter any mountain passes which I'm going to try to avoid during our trip to Schooly Palooza. But uh, a little bit about work and stuff. You know, I've been here a long time. Um, a lot of mechanics don't last at a job more than a few years, and they move on. But I really like it here. This is a good place. Um, it's a great place to work, and we work on pretty much everything. I mean, we work on everything from Geo Metro all the way up to combines and farm equipment. So the only thing we don't really work on here is like motorcycles. Um, I have a inspection license for Pennsylvania for all classes of vehicles. But uh, I just wanted to make this video about the maintenance and stuff I'm getting done on the bus. So I hope you enjoyed the update. We will see you all next time.